Hi, my fellow Shadow Clan members. Let's talk about it. You got Street Fighter 6, which is coming out in a couple of months. You got Tekken 8, which is supposed to be coming out sometime between the end of this year and next year. You got MK12, which is currently speculated to come out sometime towards the end of this year. And I don't have any information about this game, but there are posts online saying that Tenkaichi 4 is supposed to be coming out at the end of this year. We got a lot to talk about. The next five to 10 years is going to be astronomical for anybody that considers themselves a fighting game content creator. Now, don't go switching the narrative when you watch this video. I am in no way, form or fashion saying that fighting games are coming back from the dead or fighting games are being returned from the ashes. No, that is not the narrative I'm selling. Fighting games never died. Now, I'm not saying that they have the same numbers like Call of Duty or Halo slash Gears of War when they were in their prime. No, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that fighting games have carried their own weight within the gaming community pretty much since before most of us can mentally recollect. I mean, think about a game like Killer Instinct. Nice. Killer Instinct had its remake in, I think it was 2013. The gaming community had been asking for a remake of that forever. And when it came out, it had a high number of sales and was received extremely positively from everybody within the community. Not just the fighting game community, but the gaming community overall. And it still has a thriving community up to this day. Soul Calibur 6, possibly one of my favorite fighting games. Well, let me rephrase. Soul Calibur 6 isn't one of my favorite fighting games, but the Soul Calibur franchise is one of my favorite franchises. Soul Calibur 6, to this day, still has a thriving community. Hell, Skullgirls is a game that I had never heard of before I actually started watching EVO tournaments online, whether it was through YouTube or through other people that were streaming it on Twitch. When I did my research, I found out the game came out in 2013. Specifically, I'm talking about Skullgirls Second Encore. I don't know if there were other installments that came out before that, but that's the most recent one that I know about. And even though the game came out in 2013, to this day, there are still people buying the game for the first time, posting positive reviews on Steam, saying how amazing the game was. I'm probably gonna be one of those new buyers here soon because it's only like five or ten dollars. Why not try out a 2D classic? So yeah, fighting games are very much so alive. I just wanna take a moment to talk about the influx of new titles that are coming out from what I feel are leading franchises in the fighting game category. Now, me personally, I don't really have much fighting game experience. I mean, yeah, I've played in a few online battles here and there. I've played a few ranked matches, etc., etc. But most of my fighting game experience honestly comes from chilling on the couch with your best friends and your family at 2 a.m., button mashing, trying to see who can get the most W's while you got about five to 10,000 Kool-Aid jammers just laid out all across the house. Keep it real with me who actually remembers Kool-Aid Jammers. Now, thankfully, I had the chance to experience at least a little bit of the arcade era. However, by the time I was old enough to actually start traveling to the arcade by myself, most games like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter Third Strike, etc., etc., most fighting games are already being ported over to consoles. So yes, I got to experience at least a little bit of the arcade era, but for the most part, my experience was while the arcade era was on its, pretty much on its downward slope, if you will. Honestly, when I think about it, the only fighting games that I ever like actually took seriously, like actually tried to enter into local tournaments and etc., Soul Calibur 5 and Mortal Kombat X. Outside of that, I haven't taken any other fighting games seriously. I've played them, I've button mashed, but I've never taken any other fighting game seriously. But even with me not taking other fighting games seriously, fighting games have always had a special place in my heart but after you see you lose you lose you lose on the screen so many times when you're young there's only so much loss you can take when you don't have the gumption or the mortal quill to actually take the time to get better you either switch to something that you're better at or switch to something where you can actually depend on teammates to help you out no god please no and most competitive shooter games literally cover both of those aspects however recently i watched a video from one of my favorite content creators big shout out to you maximilian dude literally him along with a couple of other people i feel like are the leaders of the fighting game community if you will they have an understanding of the gaming mechanics they have a clear understanding of the history they understand the development of these games they are all in all enveloped 
in the community. I don't want to go as far as saying they are the community, but I definitely can say they are the pioneers for people who are either for the first time interested in fighting games or re-interested in fighting games. But I don't want to go on a ramble. Anyways, the video that I rewatched was a video of Max reacting to a Polygon video, which talked about how to get started in fighting games. And the video is absolutely amazing. As I said, I rewatched it. So it wasn't my first time looking at it. I don't know what it was just rewatching the video and, and hearing all of the positive tips and the positivity that can come from actually conquering and learning new games, in addition to this influx of new titles coming for the fighting game genre, it, it just got the blood pumping. I don't, know, I don't know how else to put it. It almost felt like when you're about to hit a deadlift PR, Wait, baby. You get a little nervous, but excited as well. That's genuinely how I felt as I was watching the video. It's an absolutely amazing video. So if any of you are at all interested in fighting games, I highly recommend that you take the time to watch either the original video or Max reacting to the video or both. Why not? Now, obviously I'm not saying that I will never play a first person shooter ever again in life. No, not by any means. I love first person shooters. I'm simply saying I've been playing those games for a very long time and I'm kind of ready for a switch up just for myself. So with that being said, if you follow me on TikTok, then you already know. But if you don't, I was doing an impulsive search and I made the decision. Wait, y'all can't see too well, hold on. Let me turn, give me one moment. Let me turn the background blur off. Swim, swim. Now, like I was saying, I went and purchased myself a fight stick. Also, I love the Waz arrows. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. I prefer the Waz arrows over the lever. I never really too much care for the lever when I did play in arcades, so I felt like this was the best alternative. Now, the fight stick was not a complete impulsive buy. I did take a moment to think. Corey, you have PS5 controllers. You have PS4 controllers, you have Xbox controllers. Why do you need to buy a fight stick just to rededicate yourself to the fighting game genre? When I asked myself that question, I came up with the answer fairly quickly. Me buying the fighting stick for fighting games is equivalent to me buying the Azeron for shooting games. Do I need either one of these to enjoy fighting games or shooting games? Absolutely not. But why did I buy them? Because they make the gaming experience so fucking fun. The feeling of knowing that I'm playing basically with a mechanical robot hand and actually getting kills and basically relearning how to play a game that I already enjoy felt absolutely amazing with the Azeron. So I'm applying that now to the fight stick. In my opinion, I think it's just exciting to learn something new when you enjoy what you're learning. So not only do I have to learn how to play these fighting games, learn how to execute these combos, etc., etc., but I also have to learn how to accomplish said feats on this new fight stick. Pretty much just a new way to play. So now I have my reasoning, me just wanting to switch things up for myself. I have my equipment, i.e. my fight stick. The question now is, what do I focus on? The, the obvious, obvious answer is Street Fighter. Fighter. Street Fighter 6 is getting ready to come out in, I think three months, what is it, March? April, May, June? Yeah, about three months, because it comes out June 2nd. And I don't have a history of Street Fighter. Street Fighter was not one of the, the main fighting games that I played when I was younger. But even with me not playing Street Fighter that much, even I know that Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 3rd Strike pretty much are known to man as the best fighting games ever created. So obviously, that's a great place to start. Tekken, I enjoy Tekken. Tekken seems like it's a little more mechanically difficult, but I enjoy the gameplay and the fast pace of putting the combos together and stringing the combos together in Tekken. So that may be a route. Mortal Kombat, as I said, I took Mortal Kombat X really seriously, but I haven't taken a Mortal Kombat seriously since, and I don't know when MK12 is coming out. When I get more information about it, I may try to dive back into MK11, but for the most part, that's not really on the forefront of my brain. And Tenkaichi, 
outside of playing it maybe on an emulator just for fun i don't think i'm gonna focus that until tenkaichi 4 is officially released dragon ball fighters right now is carrying the dragon ball series and we all know how amazing that game did on launch so with that being said i'll probably be mainly focusing on street fighter i got some clips of me practicing with chun li uh right now i'm just going through characters trying to see who is my quote unquote main gonna be and who I'm gonna take from Street Fighter 5 to Street Fighter 6. I'm also gonna go ahead and focus Tekken. For the longest, I played with Steve and Warong, but I really, really love Feng Wei. And I'm gonna go ahead and dedicate myself to learning how to play Feng Wei. I don't know his tier. I don't know if he's A-list, B-list, C-list, etc. But I don't care about tiers. I just want somebody who does some cool ass shit whenever I press buttons and I finally want to know what button does what cool shit. That's all. That's it. I'm probably also going to dive pretty heavy into Guilty Gear Strive. And Guilty Gear is a game I've literally never played, but it just became free on Xbox Game Pass and I downloaded it. It is visually beautiful. I love how the game looks. I love the hit animations. Like I genuinely enjoy how the game feels. So I'm not saying that's going to be one of my main fighting games but I definitely plan to give that a lot of time whether it's on YouTube with you all or whether it's just personal time that I give it while I'm playing on my own but that's enough about me I want to know about you what type of player are you do you enjoy playing multiple fighting games or do you want to stick to just one specific fighting game and exploit every single mechanic that you can find out do you enjoy the mechanics of certain fighting games or is it more so the personalities within certain franchises that keeps you interested? Make sure you comment down below and let me know. I love you all. I appreciate you all for clicking on this video. Major shout out to all my fellow Shadow Clan members. Until the next one, I'll holla at y'all.